Here we go! It's time! 2021 burbot season has commenced, or begun. Commenced? Does that mean begun? Or does that mean ended? It's on. We're in, uh, I guess, what you would call pre-spawn burbot. That's a thing. Burbot spawn under the ice, if you didn't know. Primetime burbot is uh, like the first week of March around where I'm at in central Minnesota. March 7th through the 10th is like the deal. After that, it seems to peter off. And during that time frame, you can catch them during the daytime. Right now, and for the next two, three weeks, uh, not so much during the daytime, maybe one or two bonus bites, but it's more of an after dark, working man's hours, get those hook sets in. We don't catch nearly as many, but the size is why you fish for them. It's like musky fishing through the ice. You're fishing for one bite that night, but it could be a 10 or 12 pound burbot, or my lifetime goal, a teener. Because as soon as I catch one that breaks the teens, 13, I'm getting a replica and that baby's going on the wall. Because I like to party. You know what, man? Why am I still talking to you? I've been out the last few nights and seen quite a few fish, actually. And uh, I wish I would have been filming more up until right now. But the other night, Amanda, first day off of quarantine, she had the COVID. RN nurse kind of uh, was a matter of time before it happened. Uh, her first day off of quarantine, she decided she wanted to borrow this beautiful Yeti fish house and go fishing for a few hours with a babysitter. Shout out to grandma for watching her. And what do you know, in typical Brett's wife fashion, Amanda catches by far the biggest burbot, a 12 pounder. So I don't know how she's gonna top that one this year because that thing was insane. It was like pushing 32 inches long, which is pretty long for around the Brainerd area. But the belly on that thing, my goodness, 12 pounds. I don't know, I, I hope I catch one of those this year so she gets in her first trip out, of course. It's chubby. <laughs> I got my burbot camel on. Yeah. Oh, he's chunky. He's gonna get him a little bit of line here because I can't get him his head up the hole very well. He's just spinning down there. Oh, now he's slipped right under the ice again. Here it comes. Oh, yeah. Oh. That is a cool. <laughs> Holy <laughs> crap. Belly dragger. What is that with you in the yes. biggest field ever? I don't know. <laughs> it is so big. Wow. So sick. That is a chunky one. What the heck? Oh my God. Ah! Uh, and something weird was happening on that trip. And I wish I would have been filming, but it's worth talking about now. And you, for years and years, you hear burbot, shallow rocks, gravel, sand, hard bottom. Hard bottom is king, you want to look for hard bottom, right? But, pre-spawn burbot, while those areas are good, they relate, they relate to food. And I don't know about you, it depends on the lakes you're fishing, but around this area, the food is primarily in weeds. So... We're sitting in about 20 to 22 feet of water here. The front half of the house, 21 feet away, is in about 27, 28 feet. And just behind my shoulder, I don't know, probably 8 or 10 feet behind me, there's a weed flat with cabbage and coontail before it dips off. And the other night when we were out here and Amanda caught that 12 pound freak, I saw five or six fish bourbon, because on live scope, live scope don't lie burbot coming out of the weeds and heading towards deeper water and it goes against everything I've ever learned of oh they're out deep and you know they'll slide up after dark these fish it was 7 o'clock to 7.20 we grabbed five or six fish coming out of the weeds and heading back down to deep water and she got that big into bite we missed another one and it just got me thinking like I just I can't figure these fish out I'll be honest, I don't think anyone knows what it means anymore. Seems like northern Minnesota, you get in those deep humps and you can just you catch them, they're always there. And around the Brainerd area, Cross Lake area, just anywhere in the central Minnesota area, it's like you find a huge feeding flat with cabbage, coontail, 
I mean, there's perch there, there's bait fish there, you catch walleyes, bass, pike, everything is there because it's just a big buffet. And the burbot are right there too, and I do not know if the burbot are up in those weeds all day, if it's like walleyes where they slide up, you know, 30 minutes before dark or sunset, and they're up there and feeding, and then at 7 we're seeing them vacate back deep. I can't figure it out, but I didn't want to keep that secret to myself. That Check the edges of those big feeding flats. The biggest flats on the lake with the best weeds, if they've got steep breaks and deep water close, it's it's just, it's the deal. They're there feeding and they, they'll be there all year long. And you can catch them here once they start to spawn. But once we get more towards that first week of March stuff, it seems like the, the sandier bottoms, silty sandy, uh, that's where they start doing the deed and you'll see the spawning balls or on your flasher or whatever you'll see you know the whole bottom is like six feet of just flashing that's probably 10 or 12 burbot making the next generation of burbot in a little tornado down there but don't be afraid to check the weeds out and now Amanda caught that big fish on like a one ounce glow jig with three four fat heads on it and that's another thing, I mean, you can absolutely use your normal walleye gear to catch these fish. If you're a die-hard psycho, you fish burbot 20 times a year, might want to get a big old 40-inch whooping stick like this Elliot Greenback. Uh, it's just nice to be in control, especially if you catch a 12-pounder, because on those lighter rods, even a medium-heavy 36-inch, you're getting your butt kicked, and it's nice to be able to move them in the direction you want them to move to. Uh, but as far as baits and stuff go, you can use traditional walleye tackle and fish traditional walleye spots. Or you can use the big giant like lake trout spoons and jigs. They're, you know, an ounce and a half and huge. The glow is just the key. But something that's overlooked, and especially during the spawn, is open water walleye baits, walleye jigs. So things like, let me reel it up here, this 3A sounds... VMC hot skirt jig it's called the hot skirt hot because it glows it glows hot that whole body glows I can't remember the name of this color but this one gives up a pretty good shine so it's just pretty cool that you don't just have the jig head you got that whole body mixed right in with those minnow heads glowing I've got a dead stick laying up front in probably 27 28 feet of water it's a 3 8 ounce glow uh, VMC Sleek Jig. I like that because it's got a little bit stouter hook. It's just a little beefier. Long shank hook keeper on there. You can absolutely put like, I think I've got five fat heads shoved on there. And I go about every other pinching off the tail. And when I'm using it as a dead stick, I'll put one or two live ones on there too. Tail hooks so that when it's laying there, there's still some movement. But obviously with the minnow heads and the guts ripped out, you got scent dispersed down there in that glow head. It's crazy how good they shine. The nice thing about these open water walleye jigs, when you catch a fish, a lot of the time there's more than one. Maybe not when you're pre-spawn early in the year, you're just shooting for that one fish. But as you get into the spawn, and I suggest you just block off a time period on your calendar from like March 7th through the 10th to just try to get out. because. They'll bite all day in the middle of the day, and if you catch one, there's probably 20 others nearby. And having that single hook, you can pop that bait out. You don't have to try to find a pliers. It's not like, oh, the treble hook on that spoon is way back here. You're right back down there fishing. So that's pretty cool. The hookup ratio is really good. It's just, I, I can't figure that out either. You think treble hook, I've got three hooks, and uh, how can I not catch one? But the hookup ratio on a single hook jig is outstanding. Pound that bottom. Once in a while do a big rip and don't be don't be afraid to reel up like you're fishing lake trout 10-15 feet off bottom, especially right after you glow and wiggle that bait in place. And sometimes you'll see fish come flying in from the side suspended. That's the other thing that I noticed the other night. Half the fish, three quarters of the fish, were coming from behind here up off of that weed flat and going back down deep. And the other fish that I graphed, it wasn't like anything you would think. It wasn't like they were within six inches of bottom cruising along. They were suspended 10 to 15 feet down and coming from that deeper water. And it was almost like whether they were going to the weeds or leaving the weeds, 
they almost stayed at that like 15 foot depth where the weeds stop and I it's just I don't know I'm learning more and more about these things every time I go out hopefully I can get one to bite on camera for you tonight like I said the last few nights we've seen I don't know six seven eight fish a night and you get one or two of them to bite pre-spawn they're big they're fat and they're here because they're hungry you know you get out in that March 7th through the 10th window you're gonna see 40 fish and catch three because they got other things on their mind I've dropped down the Aquaview Markham cameras doesn't matter what brand you have they'll swim 10 feet up to see what that camera is and bump into it in case it's another bourbon and they're looking to go on a date night it's wild they just they don't care about feeding they get a couple of them to come through that'll eat that maybe are post spawn they've already done the deed and they're feeding again or they're pre-spawn and they're still feeding and they haven't quite switched gears yet but those ones that just have making babies on their mind they don't care they're just looking for friends pretty crazy have quickly become my favorite fish to target through the ice and it all started because once a walleye season closes here that's coming up soon I wanted to go out, use my walleye gear, and set the hook on something that actually fought back. And I mean, it's fun catching crappies and bluegills. I, I don't disagree with that at all. I don't ever work out and I'll walk five miles down a logging road to fish a little slough just in case there's a 10 inch bluegill in there. But at some point you need to set the hook on something that actually stops the rod and pulls back. <laughs> and bourbon. The season's wide open, it doesn't close, and the best bite of the year happens after the game fish season closes. Now, right <laughs> now, there's no limit on eel pout, burbot, lingcod, mariah, lawyer, loda, loda, whatever nickname you want to give them in Minnesota. But I heard that there's a bill in the works, and that could happen soon. I mean, I'm sure it'll still be like a 20 fish limit or something that you wouldn't hit anyway, but they're finally being recognized as... I wouldn't call it a game fish, but it's not a rough fish. It's an underappreciated fish, and they taste great, and they fight hard. And I will just say, if you happen to catch one, even if you're walleye fishing, and you're disappointed because it's not a 24 to 27 inch walleye, it's a 6, 7 pound burbot, they fight so hard, don't be that clown that just throws it on the ice and wastes it. You used to see that all the time back in the day. Cause I'm old and losing my hair it's just sick and to still see some of that nowadays is gross but luckily those times are changing I saw one the other day out here probably a couple hundred yards from where the house is right now and it's just there's no reason to ever do that even if it is a carp or a rough fish wanton waste is not the deal stay tuned the house is set up I'm gonna try so hard to catch one on camera tonight but if I don't I just want you to know, don't be afraid to check the weeds for pre-spawn fatties and right off of those weed edges. They aren't all deep and on rocks and mud. And bust out that open water walleye gear you have with the walleye ice gear you already have. Take advantage of a bite that'll just get better and better until you can't get on the lake anymore because the ice deteriorates. See you later.